Hey YouTube, what's going on? I'm uh, back here with another video. It is uh, Thanksgiving Day, and I'm uh, getting ready here shortly to go uh, pick up my grandfather, go have some nice Thanksgiving dinner with my family. Um, <clears throat> but I wanted to make this video, and I wanted to make it for a while, but I just haven't got around to it. So um, this video is going to be all about the uh, the medical industry and my, uh, my, pretty much my hatred for it. So I'll probably rant a little bit, uh, but I, I got inspired a little bit more to do this video. I got a question a week, maybe two weeks ago from a girl halfway, halfway across, I mean, all the way around the world, to be honest. She's young, she, was like, she looked like she might have been 16, 18 at the oldest. Uh, and that's important because you, you know, your body heals very well when you're young. And uh, so this girl, she asked me about the natural path. You know, she wanted, you know, she had some more questions about the diet and she wanted to do the natural route before she did anything else. And the reason I say that is, so she's had it for two months and her doctors are already, the first thing they recommended was laser treatment. Now I don't know if they did topical steroids for a couple weeks and it didn't work and Sometimes doctors will prescribe stuff or, or try things because a patient is very distraught. So I have no idea about the backstory, you know, as far as that goes. But you got to be kidding me with trying to treat somebody with psoriasis with laser treatment after two fucking months. That's insanity. Insanity, in my opinion. And there's probably a lot of reasons for that. It just most of it probably has to do with money. Let's be honest, the whole industry, the whole medical industry revolves around money. That's what makes it work. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, so this video is going to be why you shouldn't listen to your doctor. I know, I'm crazy, right? Nick, why? What do you mean? He's my doctor. He studies medicine, Nick. I should listen to him. Nope. He studied medicine 20 years ago. 10 years ago. Right? How fast does the medical industry evolve? We hear it all the time. The medical industry is evolving so rapidly. All these new medications, these new, you know, these new remedies, these new cures that we have. We put so much money into this. And I'm not saying that no doctor's worth listening to, but most of them nowadays, they don't practice medicine the way that doctors used to practice medicine. They follow the process now. They follow the process, they follow the money, and whether it has to do with themselves or the people above them in, you know, in their practice, we don't know. I don't know. Probably, you know, varies by situation, but a fun fact about the medical industry for you is when you get something published in the medical industry, it's all done through peer review. Now think about that. So, if you come out with some research and you want it published because you believe it's true, or maybe you don't believe it's true, but you want to publish it because you're trying to get your name out there in the medical industry, it's all done through peer review and they, it's, it's basically, pol it's all like political, politics, political agenda. And your peers have to agree that it's quality information. Now, I don't know if they do similar research to to you know confirm what you've done or do similar research or or counter research to to say that it's not good information but what I do know and you don't don't quote me on this I just but if you go if you go looking for this information you'll find it from other doctors out there I think I remember the the place I heard it was Dr. Mercola I've talked about him before he's got some good stuff online I would definitely recommend you check them out. But the way that the process seems to work is that if you say, if you, you know, if you tell somebody that you're not going to approve their, their stuff to get published, then what happens when you try to publish information and get your name out there for some research that you've done? The same peers are going to say, no fucking way, right? So it's like, I mean, there's, there's probably no other way to do it if you think about it, because if the government was regulating it, it would be just as bad, just as much misinformation, probably. Uh, I mean, all the 
all the big pharmaceutical companies are usually backed by the government or, or have some tie to the government. So, um, I don't know. But anyways, you, so your doctors, it's, it's funny like what they tell you about psoriasis. Um, I talked to seven people in the medical field, right? So I talked to my nurse practitioner, two primary doctors who were not my primary doctor, but they were someone's primary doctor at the place I went to. Mine was just busy. And four dermatologists. And this was a span of like nine months. Or, yeah, about nine months. And I can tell you, after the year and, you know, after the 14, 15 months, however long it's been since I've been dealing with the psoriasis, my whole learning process, I am more qualified to tell you about your psoriasis than any one of those seven people that I saw. And it's, it's nothing to do with being a doctor. It, empirical experience, we're, I mean, humans are empirical learners. We, some people will learn well out of, you know, from books, but most people learn by experience, by doing things. It's just, it's just the nature of the beast. Like we're empirical learners, that's what we are. So people who have experienced psoriasis and who go through, you know, natural learning, you know, natural learning process, um, or natural healing process rather, they learn as they go. And it's just, especially with a specific, you know, problem. So like, all those doctors, they cover a wide variety of problems. They don't have time to focus on one thing. That's why I tell you, you should always trust yourself. Always trust yourself. Because you know much more than most of the doctors you're seeing. Um, and, and it's not always the case, but if you go see a dermatologist or a, a, you know, a, doc, like a primary care doctor about psoriasis, and they don't ask you about your diet, and trust me, 97% of them probably won't, because I was 0 for 7. So, if they don't ask you about your diet, they don't know what they're talking about. It's just simple fact. Um, so it's all built around process and money because if they had cures for everything, where would the money be? Which we wouldn't have to keep coming back. All right, and let's say if you want to refute that and say, well, you know, people, you know, all the medical industry is inherently good and they do want to cure everything. Well, if they came out with a pill tomorrow that cured psoriasis forever and it was actually true, you'd pay bazillions of dollars for it. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to afford it. Let's put it that way. You would not be able to afford it and your insurance probably wouldn't cover it. So, because psoriasis isn't, you know, you're not going to die from it supposedly. So, um, so the medical industry, they, they create um, temporary remedies. That's what, they, that's what the pharmaceutical companies do. So... I know I ranted a little bit on that one, so I apologize, but this all started for me when I, um, when I injured my legs. So I ended up having seven stitches in my legs, and um, two weeks later, three weeks later, I see these spots in my body, so I go to see my, my nurse practitioner. Now, when I go to see her for the first time, I am ignorant to everything that I know now. N nothing. Never thought anything about what I ate. Just, you know, I thought I ate a fairly healthy, you know, fairly healthy lifestyle for the most part. Like, I knew I wasn't an extremist by any means, but fairly balanced. Um, I exercised a lot either way. But I go to see her, and the first thing I tell her when I get in there, because I've obviously been, you know, reading this shit online, I say... I think I have ring. I mean, I think I have psoriasis. And she looks at it and was like, oh, "It doesn't look like psoriasis." We start talking for a little while, and you know, five minutes later, she's like, "You know, I think you have ringworm. It looks like ringworm." She's pretty confident. And what she tells me was, "You shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't go on the internet. You shouldn't, you know. There's a lot of misinformation. It's a vast place full of, you know, whatever." And like, this isn't 1999. Right? There is a ton, a ton of good information on the internet if you look for it. And actually, you don't even have to look that hard anymore. It's just there. It's just there. People don't create web pages anymore that are like trolling, full of bullshit. They just, it's too much time, effort, and money. People don't do it. And if they do, it's just, it gets flooded out by all of the, all of the good stuff that's there. So, 
I say use the internet. Your doctors will probably tell you not to, but they're crazy. And like I said, they they studied medicine 20 years ago, so if they're not staying current, then what good are they? So she tells me I have ringworm, and I go on a month of, she would smell, I think it's called fluconazole or fluconazole, I forget how to say it, but it's, uh, it's an antifungal, they look like little pink footballs. Um, so she puts me on that for a month, and I sp start spraying tenactin all over my body because that's the same, the same um, fungus that, that causes, like athlete's foot, it, that causes ringworm. So I start spraying tenactin all over my body for two months while I'm, I'm taking this pill for a month. And, <laughs> crazy, right? And it's not getting any better. Meanwhile, that stuff's expensive. It's like 10 bucks a can, and I was going through like three a week. So it's not cheap. So it's not getting any better after two months, and I'm just like, at this point, I'm waiting for a dermatologist appointment, which, insanity that you have to wait four to five months for a dermatologist appointment. I called like four different places, too, and all of them had like three, four-month wait. And I say that's crazy, and half of you know exactly why I say that's crazy, because you don't... I spent literally two minutes with the doctor the first time I went. The other three times I went, I spent under five minutes, the other two, and I spent under ten minutes on the last one. And the only reason that I spent any more than five minutes with that last doctor is because I was so persistent. I didn't... I was so... I was... You know, at, this, at that point, I was pissed off that nobody was listening because they don't listen to your story. They don't care. Um, so I was just pissed off and I was telling them, hey, I'm not leaving here until you give me a biopsy. Because when I saw the last doctor, so meanwhile, I walked out with prescriptions from all the other doctors in under five minutes. Different type of topical steroid every time. And none of them listened to my story. I, I'm, I'm trying to, at this point, seek somebody's advice who is in the medical industry that I thought would have some insight. So I'm telling them, like, this is what happened. These are the events in my life that led me to looking like this, and I've never had this before. So I'm trying to find, you know, I was trying to find somebody to talk it out with, see if we could find a common denominator. And they just, they wouldn't listen. What they say is like, oh, it's hereditary. We don't know much about it. We can't, you know, you can't fix it. You just got to live with it. S strep throat can be a cause or skin trauma can be a cause. Well, what's the, what's the uh, common denominator right there? Antibiotics. Weird. Um, you can tell I just, I just oh, it's, I'm so, I, I hate it. I hate it. It's so ridiculous. Um, so, saw all those dermatologists and just had no success. No success. Not one of them mentioned diet at all. Um, where was I going with this? Man, losing my train of thought because I'm getting angry. So, um, oh, so after I, you know, after I'm at the last doctor, I'm there for two minutes. Now I made the, the appointment specifically with the head doctor because my cousin had worked with this dermatologist before. She said he was really good, really helpful. So I get in there, they put me in the room, they tell me to get naked, not really, but down to my down to my underwear. So I'm sitting there and this young lady comes in and she um, you know she starts talking to me and she basically tells me that she's gonna handle it because the doctor's not available. The first two minutes, she starts talking to me. She asked me the medications, you know, that I've, you know, that I've done. And meanwhile, I'm pissed already because I, I don't want to see her. I want to see the, you know, I want to see the head doctor. And she starts recommending pills or shots. So I've had, at this point, I've had psoriasis for like seven months or, or, or whatever it was. And I just, I didn't want to go that route yet. There's people out there that have had it for years and years, you know, and... I don't want to go the route of putting weird shit in my body until I absolutely have to. Because I was convinced at this point, and I still didn't know a lot, but I was convinced, convinced that there's no fucking way that this can't go away. Like, it just, I never had it before. There has to be a reason. 
and I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna accept the fact that you're telling me I should start injecting myself. So right there, I stop where I say, look, and you, sometimes you gotta be aggressive with your doctors because they're not, they're gonna, they're gonna brush you to the side, and people are very passive when they see their doctor. Don't be passive. And it might take you a lot of courage, but just, just talk, like, say it. I almost got in a fight with one of the guys. I was so infuriated, so furious, so in, I don't even know what word I'm looking for. I was fucking pissed. And I almost got in a legitimate argument with one of the doctors because he was just being a jackass. And, uh, but so this lady, I tell very politely, I'm like, look, hey, I understand that you're a medical professional, but I'm not going to take your advice because I didn't come here to see you and you don't know any of my medical history. I want to talk to the doctor that I made the appointment with. So she leaves the room. Ten minutes later, she comes back with him. We go through the process. He listens a little bit, only probably because I just made a big stink. And I tell him, like, I'm not leaving here without a biopsy. I was like, I don't, I don't care if all of you look at it and tell me it's psoriasis because you've seen it a thousand times. And I asked him, this is the question I asked him, can any other skin conditions look like psoriasis? And he said, well, yeah. And I said, well, then that's the reason. I want a skin biopsy. Like, I don't care. I want a skin biopsy. I want to be 1,000% positive that we're dealing with psoriasis. So he did it. Um, you know what's funny now that I say that? I, I, never even, I never even got the results from the skin biopsy. So while I'm waiting for the results, I do light therapy. And light therapy, uh, light therapy was helpful if anyone's ever done it. But I would tell you, don't pay 30 bucks a visit to go see a dermatologist. Go to a tanning bed. That's what I did. But just do it. Just know you got to do it in slow increments. Don't go in there and burn yourself. Um, so I guess that's the end of my rant. I feel like there was a lot of stuff I wanted to talk about that I didn't. That I didn't. I don't know. I had a lot of ideas last night when I was uh, planning on making this video, and my camera died in the in the middle of it, so I had to redo it. Um, so I guess that's it. Uh, main point is is the medical industry. It's it's built around money. And if you're going through this process and you're learning and you're experiencing the changes in your body and, and what happens, uh, you know, when you change your diet and things, you're, you're going to be so much more qualified than 90% of the doctors that you talk to. So everyone have a good Thanksgiving. Uh, if you're like me, I'm probably just going to cheat my ass off and eat like a, like a savage today because I love Thanksgiving dinner. So, I'll probably regret it in like two days, but that's all right. I'll get back on the uh, on the diet train on uh, on Friday or Saturday. So everyone have a happy Thanksgiving. Um, I will talk to you soon. I'm gonna come back. My next video, I'll probably talk about uh, probably talk about depression and anxiety that come along with psoriasis. I dealt with a lot of it, uh, and I, I'm sure a lot of people, you know, I'm sure a lot of people out there are doing the same thing. So uh, I'll help you get through it. And uh, have a happy Thanksgiving, guys. Take it easy.